In this video, we're going to go over how to add markers to a floor plan. To save some time, I started some of the drawings so that you can see what it looks like complete and that we don't have such a long video. Step one, you work from light to dark and you work from broad areas to more details. So I have put in some pencil marks just as guidelines for the tile. If you are doing this yourself, you're going to want to actually go in with a colored beige and just add, before you go in with your pencil, just go add some of that blush of color to your drawing. So starting with light to dark, This is Tombow 990. Usually I work with Prismacolors uh, when I wanna do large areas, but I didn't have a beige at home with me. So after you go in with your light beige, you can see like here in the shadows that some of my pencil marks um, smeared because this is water-based, so it's smearing some of those. Um, it's not a big deal to me but if it's a big deal to you, you're gonna to want to go ahead and, and put the beige down first. So after you get your beige down, you can go ahead and put your grid in and make just the suggestion of some tiles. So just here and there, go in and make the suggestion that we have tiles. Just kind of random. Next, go in with some gray to add shadows. So we select a light source coming from that angle to the left. If you're left-handed, you might wanna do it just the opposite, but that light coming through the window. And we're gonna just start adding some shadows. So you put your pencil grid down, you put some beige on the paper, and now I'm going to add shadows. This is a 30. Let's just see what that looks like. So I had this printed for you on the copy center and the cardstock that they have has a lot of texture to it. I preferred working on a cardstock that's really smooth. So we have a cardstock that I get at Staples and such that is smooth. So this paper that we got free from the copy center, so I'm not complaining, um, has that texture. And so that's actually better for pencil. And then get something with less tooth for marker. So. That's 30. We'll do those L's again. You're getting that, that watermark there because I'm, I'm staying on the page with my marker a little too long. So I'm, I'm getting those blots of colors and you can soften those out later in Photoshop. L shape. L shape, L shape. Shadow in the sink. Shadow here. Chair will have some shadow. L, there's that L shape again. Table will have a shadow. You can use a straight edge. Maybe I'll fill in this area here with some gray. You 
think that's too dark. I'll just show you what 20% looks like. With that 10 or 20%, go ahead and also add some color on your appliances. Add some grayscale to your appliances. I've already done this, but go ahead. What I did was I added some very light gray for some texture on the rug. Maybe a few 45 degree lines on a glass table. Still working from light to dark. Um, when you are putting in, you, we put in our, our beige, right, for our floor. When you're drawing, uh, it's more sophisticated not just to do something once in a composition. So don't just do a color once. So we're gonna go ahead and take that beige and we're gonna add some of that to the rug. We're gonna add some of that to the warmth of our chairs. maybe a little to the bar stools. Um, you know, again, just touch it, touch it around your drawing. Next, we moved to light blue. So this is the light blue that I had. This is called sky blue. And I'm gonna add some sky blue to my wet zone, my sink adding some sky blue to my bar stools. Maybe in the area rug. Definitely in the reflection of some glass. So now you can see I, I, I probably will eventually go over and hit the shadows a little bit more. All right, let's put some more broad color in. Um, I'm gonna make my chairs leather chairs. I started with some warmth, lights coming from here. And so I have light umber. And I'm gonna follow the contour of the chair. This is adding some depth to my drawing. But you'll see pretty soon, when I start getting my black granite in, you know, pretty soon we're gonna have some, some depth to our drawing that we'll wanna balance around. If you have a blender, you can try to blend. If not, you could try to blend with some marker. If I had a lighter brown, it would be nice to start from a lighter brown, but let me just try to put some of this on, maybe just a little softer, so that this looks like an old leather chair. Shadow coming this way, so in here it's gonna start getting darker.
just like anything, we don't want just the brown once. Maybe I want to put a wood trim on my table. Maybe I could add some brown to my doors. Now let's see, let's see how we can build this up a little bit. All right, so now when you're looking at the drawing, um, we worked from light to dark, but now you're probably experiencing some dark spots here. So we're gonna go ahead and make this black granite countertops. And we're going to start by applying the gray here at 80% vertically. So I'm just turning my page around so a little tip, use your straight edge, place that in the palm of your hand, put your knuckles under and then press down. You're protecting the page where you don't want to show color. So I'm, I'm gonna go here. So just start by protecting the page and going around. Right, like when we were in kindergarten, didn't we start with tracing the edges? And then just go through with that broad edge of your marker. And again, if this paper had less tooth, or if you're working on, if we had printed this on marker paper, um, you would have experienced just this really nice glide of the marker. So I, I just say that again, not a great paper for marker, but you'll find if you're gonna put some pencil on top of this, it'll be really nice. Okay, continue on and do the, the other edges. So this is showing that there's the base cabinet and the top cabinets. I'm just gonna go ahead and make all of these dark, thinking that you know we cut it like at four feet. Protect your edge. You can also pull back your straight edge as you're laying down marker. If you like to work that way, pull away, pull away from it. So this was loose and free. This was more using the straight edge. That's completely up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and just do this loose. So how do countertops typically join uh, in, in reality? Usually there's what's called a corner or mitered edge there, something like this. And so the granite or the grain of the granite will turn. So that often looks better when we're applying marker as it would be in actuality. So you can do that. And for the sake of time, I'm just gonna to try to be very quick with this. Again, if this was printed on marker paper or something, a nice smooth cardstock, you wouldn't be having all this texture, just a different look. 